Ladies and gentlemen, your Artemis II crew. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. In 2017, NASA introduced a moon exploration program called the Artemis and used a partially reusable crewed spacecraft known as Orion. On November 16, 2022, a test flight designated as Artemis 1 was conducted to launch the uncrewed Orion spacecraft around the moon before the Artemis 2 mission with astronauts aboard. Go for launch. At this time, I give you a go to resume count and launch Artemis 1. Artemis 1 was launched on the Block 1 variant of the Space Launch System with the highest payload and liftoff thrust of any rocket currently in operation. After reaching the Earth's orbit, the upper portion carrying the Orion spacecraft separated and later released Orion and deployed the 10 CubeSat satellites. On November 21, Orion conducted one flyby of the moon, entered a distant retrograde orbit for six days, and then completed another flyby of the moon before returning to Earth. Orion re-entered the Earth's atmosphere with the protection of its heat shield and, like other capsules, deployed a series of parachutes to counter the immense speed after re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Orion splashed down in the Pacific Ocean and activated flotation devices to keep floating. Immediately after splashdown, a San Antonio-class amphibious transport dock ship rushed in to recover the spacecraft. Finally, the crew used fast boats and ropes to guide it inside the well deck of the USS Portland. Artemis I represented the hard work of thousands across the world, determined to explore for the benefit of all. After years of discussions and testing procedures, Artemis I finally carried the dreams and aspirations of the world back to the moon. I knew this would be an exciting mission. I mean, we haven't left uh, low Earth orbit in over 50 years. Nobody on my team had done it. Most of them weren't even alive back when we did it last. NASA had put a lot of effort to design and build the first human spacecraft for lunar missions in over 50 years. And it eventually laid the foundation for a generational rocket. Not only did Artemis I prove that we could go to the moon, but it also showcased that it is possible to live and work on the moon and establish an outpost for future distant exploration out to Mars and beyond. When Orion successfully came back to Earth, it was a testament to the capabilities of NASA teams that put the hardware together to build the Orion spacecraft. The success of Artemis I proved that it was time to put humans on board. The Artemis II objectives are based on the results of the first Artemis mission, and it will be launched in a similar fashion using the Block One variant of the Space Launch System. However, there's a catch. This time, the Orion spacecraft would take four astronauts to the moon. 
Ladies and gentlemen, your Artemis II crew. Thank you to the NASA workforce. Thank you to our industry partners, everyone in Europe that's working for this. America has made a very deliberate choice over decades to curate a global team, and we are going to the moon together. We need to celebrate this moment in human history. It is the next step on the journey that gets humanity to Mars. Am I excited? <laughs> Absolutely. The flight profile of Artemis II is called a hybrid free return trajectory. Orion will conduct multiple maneuvers to raise its orbit around Earth until it finally places the spacecraft on a lunar free return trajectory. This trajectory enables the Earth's gravity to naturally pull Orion back home after it has flown around the Moon. Artemis II will send astronauts on an approximately 10-day mission, ultimately setting a record for the farthest human travel beyond the far side of the Moon. Preparations for the launch of the Artemis II are underway, and it is scheduled to launch in April 2026. On October 18, 2023, NASA and the Air Force Research Laboratory started developing an appropriate seat and a suit for the next Orion mission at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The tests were primarily focused on how the human body reacts under rapid acceleration, simulating the event of a spacecraft landing in the water. The tests were performed with the U.S. Air Force volunteers who met the height and weight requirements. They told you how much this is going to hurt. We get it in the Just enough so with the seatbelt plan. The scientists tested several scenarios and received feedback from the participants on the suit fit, comfort, and seat integration during impact events. These results would help scientists develop safer and better seats and suits for astronauts in the future. NASA and the Department of Defense have been conducting a series of tests to demonstrate and evaluate the procedures and equipment that will be used in recovery operations for Artemis II. One such demonstration was the Underway Recovery Test, or URT-11, conducted in February 2024. All the previous exercises mostly focused on recovering the uncrewed spacecraft. However, URT-11 was the only demonstration during which the DOD and NASA completed a full recovery simulation with the Artemis II flight crew. As the astronauts splash down, the Navy divers open the hatch to help the astronauts exit the spacecraft. The astronauts are then picked up using a helicopter and flown back to the recovery ship. The teams then shifted their focus towards recovering the spacecraft using a series of lines and slowly towing it back inside the ship. There's an entire operation involved just in getting that capsule out of the ocean. It's an extremely complex process that's been under development for, I think, over 10 years now. In recent years, space exploration has moved from just astronomers with telescopes looking at distant planets to real-time physical explorations conducted through unmanned spacecraft and human spaceflight. From 1958, when the first U.S. satellite went into orbit, to the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope in 2021, America continues to push the boundaries of space exploration. However, one of the most important and recent exploration technologies in space exploration is the Boeing X-37B, which was launched in 2010. 
It is called an Orbital Test Vehicle, or OTV, which acts as an autonomous drone and lands like any other aircraft on the runway. However, it is launched using specialized rockets. The X-37B conducts various tests in space, but before its launch, the unmanned spacecraft is towed to the rocket facility. For instance, the first four launches of the X-37B were conducted using the Atlas V rocket. One. But after that, it was launched using the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. So, before the launch date, the X-37B is towed from a unique facility known as the home of X-37B to the SpaceX facility to prepare it for the upcoming launch. The OTV is launched using a special pod attached to an expendable launch rocket, such as the Atlas V. The pod, otherwise known as a payload fairing, protects the X-37B against the impact of dynamic pressure and aerodynamic heating during launch through an atmosphere. Once in space, the fairing is jettisoned, exposing the X-37B to outer space. The Atlas V rocket is approximately 188 feet long and 12.5 feet in diameter. And at the time of the launch, while carrying fuel and the X-37B, it weighs an astounding 730 pounds. The first X-37B launched on its first mission, designated as OTV-1, on an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral on April 22, 2010. It was placed into low Earth orbit for testing. Although the U.S. Air Force revealed little to no details of the mission, a worldwide network of amateur astronomers claimed to have identified the spacecraft in orbit. However, after spending 220 days in space, the X-37B was de-orbited, re-entered Earth's atmosphere, and landed successfully at Vandenberg Air Force Base. While landing, the OTV-1 suffered a tire blowout and sustained minor damage to its underside. Since then, the X-37B has conducted six more launches after its first launch. However, the most time spent in space was during the OTV-6, when the spacecraft set a record with an impressive 908-day journey before returning to Earth. Its most recent launch to space was OTV-7, which was conducted on December 28, 2023. Although the X-37B is still in space, this flight will surely create new records. After completing its orbit cycle, ground controls command the spacecraft to re-enter the atmosphere. Upon doing so, the OTV flies back to its home airstrip remotely, executing a perfect landing without the need for any human intervention. As it lands, the ground teams collect data from the craft before it is serviced and prepared for the next flight. These missions exemplify the relentless drive for innovation in space exploration. They push technological boundaries and pave the way for future discoveries that will have lasting impacts on both aerospace technology and human advancement. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.